feel, I must warn you. This is who I am. Sabrina! I think people are right to be a bit skeptical. He, he does seem to really be at Sabrina's beck and call, just sort of as Miss Wardwell is, uh, or Madam saying, you know, she's she's constantly there and helping her move along, and then Nick's there helping her move along, and you know, even Ambrose is there helping Sabrina. Everyone's kind of helping her, and the big question is why? What is the intention behind that? And in part two, we really do start to see some of these intentions surface and come to light and um, when we'll see that with Nick as well. Yeah, the Warlock world is a very dark one and a, a selfish one and um, we definitely do see a bit more of that develop as well um, and I don't want to like give away the ending quite yet or spoil anything so yeah you want to? <laughs> What's the last scene? <laughs> Probably a bit more sort of self-realization as to how she got there and why she's there, and maybe questioning more about taking a different path herself. I think that Sabrina uh, and what she stands for uh, in being a woman in her own right and finding her voice so clearly is inspiring Madame Satan to maybe do the same for herself. But then it's also really interesting to see Madame Satan be in a kind of human world, right? That's the fun of it, isn't it? And how far is she going to take it? And uh, the fact that we start to see a sort of uh, breaking down, a dissemblance of her barriers and her um, belief system, I think, whatever that might be. Does she have to continue being you know, the Dark Lord's foot soldier? Maybe she's a little tired of that. The following of the show is so huge, which is like, you know, mind blowing to see that. Um, and it's really fun that there's a lot of Team Harvey or Team Nick, and I really want a sweater or a t shirt made, and I want to wear a Team Harvey shirt across this face right here. Um, <laughs> It's blown blown me away how quickly um, the Sabrina fan base has come up and it's um, voracious and it's appetite and um, so I, I, I'm kind of pinching myself that you know I came from Doctor Who in this wonderful world of, of fans over there to, to this so it's um, it's it's just as passionate I'd say um, but kind of but with a newer audience. No, I haven't really. I'm just grateful that they've um, asked me to come back. So I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, they seem to be doing pretty well the first time round. I don't think they need an actor with an idea in there. It's like, oh. no, they're so talented. <laughs> they don't need. They don't need us. No, we literally just learn it, say it, and go. And uh, the real talent, the real star, is Roberto for sure. Um, that man's mind is unbelievable, just uh, if I could have a, an ounce of that imagination. And, um, and then of course the cast is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, Kieran and Shipka, uh, I mean that woman is, I would like to be her when I grow up. Uh, she has taught me so much in how to you know, conduct myself and, and be a professional. <laughs> She's amazing, yeah, isn't she? Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that that sort of work ethic that she puts into everything was really just like, I mean, we, we've said it all the time, but she sets the bar and, like, you know, wow. we just, yeah, very high. And she's there morning to night pretty much every single day. And, um, and yeah, like you said, Roberto as well is the, yeah. is the wizard at the head of this all. Still the one that just kills me was The Exorcist, where, you know, I do everything. Madam Satan does everything in four, five, six inch heels. And um, we're uh, handed by the props department um, a blanket. Within uh, that blanket is Maggot Baby. And we're told, and it's like two o'clock in the morning, right? And don't look at it. And we're like, oh my God, like this is going to be really scary. And they're like, just don't unwrap it or look at it and we're like okay so we're like running through this jumping around and we get to this well and it's a big hole and we have and it's one shot one take right so don't fuck it up right <laughs> and um i fling the maggot baby in the blanket down into and down the well we all look down and the blanket opens up 
and Elmo with a dildo strapped to his head and his ass is doing this back up at us as we look down at Elmo with dildo strapped to him. Now, my question is this, in a pinch, the props department had to throw that together. So first of all, why have they got Elmo in the truck and two dildos available? <laughs> Have it. Oh yeah, that happened and we did not, we didn't crack. No. I don't even want to say anything after that. <laughs>